Mr. Courage, I was informed that you have one hour and ten minutes to conclude your closing argument. Please continue. Microphone, please. Ah, sorry. I, I said I would be very happy if this 10 could be extended to 20 or something like that. But I, I, I don't think so. Please conclude in, in the time allotted. Thank you. Uh, I shall try to condense our final brief, the defense final brief. Everything is in the final brief defense final brief, but I have to refer to this incredible selectivity of the prosecution when they quote the entire document except for uh, the last uh, line in a document which clearly defines its character. For instance, uh, when I'm asked uh, what targets, and I said only military targets, this is omitted, for instance, and a multitude of other things. The prosecution wants uh, what uh, what they stated in paragraphs 608 and 609 and 614 to 616, uh, they want that to stand, which is that there was a policy of terror in Sarajevo without any obligation on their part to ascertain who created this policy of terror, what its components were, what proves its existence. And they give a totally erroneous motive and cause. It is quite clear that the only side which could benefit from the suffering of Sarajevo and the citizens of Sarajevo, both Muslim and Serb ethnicity, was the Muslim political side. They took advantage of this. Uh, they drew benefits from it. The Serbian side did not have any benefits from that. Excellences in the exhibits, you have uh, ample evidence uh, where well, you can see from the beginning that uh, initially I believed the foreigners very much and uh, I actually criticized the Army of Republika Srpska without justification. Had there existed any agreement or any plan and policy of terror, all of them would have told me, uh, because they were not afraid of me, come on, don't play the fool. This is what we agreed upon, but never in any intercept is there any insinc insincerity in our efforts uh, for Sarajevo not to suffer. <clears throat> but this uh, is just uh, unsustainable, I mean, the way it is portrayed. Uh, I should like to uh, refer the chamber's attention to 40 witnesses from the SRK who talked here, who testified here, uh, annulling everything uh, that the prosecution charges me with. And the documents, uh, one, P1478, which are mischaracterized by uh, the prosecution, that is pages 73 to 74, then P1. Could, uh, in, could Mr. Karadzic please slow down with the numbers? We cannot follow. Please slow down when you refer to the numbers. So, paragraphs of the prosecution final brief, 608 and 609, and uh, paragraphs from 614 to 616, the prosecution sustains this thesis about the existence of a policy of terror in Sarajevo. And it invokes selectively documents, uh, omitting from those documents the key elements uh, which actually determine the nature, the character of such documents, the documents which I recommend to the chamber. So not to take their word for, for it, but to see and to check these are the documents which have been misquoted, P1478, pages. 
173 to 174. Then P991, P5989, D, D, 4373, paragraphs 5 and 7. P1484, pages uh, 140 and 141 and 149, all these are mischaracterizations. Then P1006, D324, P5065, 5, five P6297, in all these documents, uh, authentic documents, secret documents between the commands, uh, they all refer to the protection of civilians in Sarajevo whenever action is uh, carried out. And they clearly show that the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina is uh, where it is and where the hideouts in the city are and where action has to be taken. So the prosecution simply invokes documents that have not been accepted, like P4800 and 4807, it footnotes uh, 2291, 2294, and 2311. This is what you have to resort to if you have to patch up some hollow uh, proofs and evidence. Then in paragraph 619, they say that Karadzic received the regular reports on the situation in Sarajevo. So what? Uh, did those reports uh, contain any proof? Uh, that I uh, was informed about uh, crimes uh, committed by Serbs, and then I was papering over that. I was keeping silent. Uh, these documents uh, refer exclusively to events, to developments, to attacks. The army of Bosnia and Herzegovina attacked here or there, and we responded in this or that way. These are secret reports, and all stories about how the Serbs fired a shell would have been recorded there. And the, the observers on the observation posts, or the Limas, would have been informed because they were informed in advance of any intentions and targets. Uh, the prosecution failed to demonstrate that uh, any specific incidents is something that Karadzic was aware of or had been informed about. Uh, and uh, in fact, many of the incidents uh, that are in the indictment uh, uh, were incidents in respect to which Amprofor did not protest uh, with the Sarajevo government. Uh, simply, there was no protest for specific incidents because Amprofor was uh, n not satisfied that it was so. In paragraph 621, the document which the prosecution erroneously quotes, misquotes, uh, is P2493, page 9, they leave out uh, the key word, which is that retaliation shall be against military targets. Ah, <coughs> where uh, You can see the handwriting here, the annotation. Shell Doboy. We retaliate. It is effective. Question. Civilian targets? Karadzic. No, military targets. I nema nigde. There is not a single shred of evidence about any reprisals uh, taken against uh, someone who was not opening fire, and there is no proof uh, about the deliberate and intentional uh, conscious uh, targeting of civilian targets. And uh, courage did not uh, uh, direct terror, as in paragraph 622 and uh, 
as can be seen from uh, evidence about humanitarian proof. Our paragraphs 1324 and 1325 and 2984 and 2988 explain this question. The prosecutors invoking some secondary sources of uh, people who are not in the know about how allegedly Karadzic had said uh, something or how they had understood something that Karadzic had said is of no relevance. It cannot be of any importance uh, in respect of the documents. Having regard to the documents I sent to the army, I was the only supreme commander who was restraining the army. And my conflicts with the army were not because of some crimes uh, which they committed or mine on it was actually a fight for them to let through humanitarian relief. Here you say that uh, Karadzic manages managed the crisis by managing humanitarian relief. I interfered with humanitarian relief only when so requested by the representatives of the international community. And Sadako Ogata thanked me courteously many times. I personally went to Bratunac to convince not the army, not the troops, but the people to let humanitarian convoys through. Over 20,000 landings of humanitarian aircraft at Sarajevo. This is not the way it, it was. Namely, they did have enough food. Uh, Never did Karadzic deal with that except in the form of encouraging and uh, ordering that it be made possible. Of course, uh, this is falsified by the prosecution because they omit to say that I said when uh, the airport is shut, uh, shut off, of course, humanitarian convoys can still use that route. This was omitted from the account of the prosecution. And uh, who is this supposed to deceive? Exclusively the trial chamber and to lead the trial chamber to uh, adopt an erroneous decision. This is document P859, where they say because of the abuse of the first uh, core of the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina, smuggling of arms, etc. Karadzic states that humanitarian relief can still use uh, alternative routes, but the airport shall be shut down for these reasons. Routes across our territory. Nema toga. This is of not in the uh, presentation of the prosecution in their brief. In paragraph six to eight, uh, it is claimed that I had been informed, that I had agreed uh, that the Serbian response was inadequate. I am not uh, competent there. I thought that the proportional response was one to one. I always quarreled with the army and they were right. I was not right because I believed these foreigners and I spent more time with the foreigners than uh, doing my own uh, presidential job. Uh, foreigners were always uh, visiting me or I was abroad at conferences and I addressed these issues only when so requested. I believed that our responses were inadequate, but they were not inadequate. Under the law, the president cannot order a unit that has been attacked not to respond. No one can uh, prevent a, a soldier from defending himself. That just uh, doesn't exist. And with the support of the international community and the media, it was easy for the Muslim army, not to say the Muslims, to uh, endure under pressure to shoot at us and get fire in response, and then they report us. I did think that there was some senseless shelling, but when the army showed me what had actually happened, it, I was proven uh, wrong. Excellencies, it is uh, separated here. The uh, contention of the prosecution is that uh, there had existed a plan of terrorization, a plan and the decision to terrorize. I heard, uh, 
uh, also a permit or perhaps order to snipe a civilian. Yes. Look at what uh, the prosecution has charged me with. There is not a single fatality which has been properly processed uh, from sniping. They uh, question the credibility of Mile Popper uh, and Dr. K uh, Dr. Subotic. They are actually academicians in respect of what the prosecution experts di did. They have shown and demonstrated everything. It is absolutely imp impossible to hit someone with a sniper from a thousand meters distance. They didn't show where Munira Zametica was. Uh, was she turned uh, towards the creek or uh, facing away from the creek? Uh, they didn't show that. That uh, Everything depends on that. They didn't demonstrate whether you could shoot from the left bank by the church uh, in the river Dobrinja. <coughs> Sania Jelan herself saw uh, ricocheted uh, automatic uh, fire bullets from the asphalt, and here it is claimed that she was hit in the lower end of the uh, lower part of the back. But this is nonsense. This is an insult, an insult to the trial chamber first and foremost. At Baba Stena, between the place where the little Peter was wounded and Baba Stena, Stena rather. There is a hill, uh, whether there are houses or woods, that's irrelevant, but there was a hill there. You cannot, from uh, a pointed rock, hit someone with a sniper with precision from a distance of 1,000 or 1,500 meters. This is pure nonsense. And if the prosecution hopes that this will actually pass, we have nothing to say. The Mile Popovic and Zorica Subotic, all uh, stated facts here. And uh, it is not an isolated belief uh, that there was a planned explosion at Markale. You heard the investigator uh, say, let's go to the roof to see whether the stabilizer is perhaps not on the roof. Etc. But the facts which were adduced here, that is uh, firm as a rock and cannot be refuted. It is uh, an exercise in futility. Uh, let me show you uh, a couple of photographs at this point so that you can see how things actually look. This is Dresden after the Second World War. Gaza. This is Gaza. No evidence, Mr. Kaiser? No. No, no. I would just like to illustrate my point. I don't want to tender it. I should like to illustrate. Oh, you're presenting documents, which is not in, in our evidence. Dobro, <laughs> Excellency. Excellencies, this is Mostar after three, three, three wars into uh, three months, uh, sorry, into the war, and uh, there is not a single dent in Sarajevo. Uh, just honest buildings, government buildings, Holiday Inn and Rainbow Building were mentioned, and we have proved that they also opened fire from there. There is not a single dent on the buildings. They say that we had a policy of terror and policy of killing over uh, 160. 1260 days of the war. Where are these victims? 6,000 of them are combatants and uh, fighters, uh, most of them. Where are the victims? The victims which are impressive, or rather the large numbers, is the ones that they caused at Markale and in the queue for humanitarian relief and the queue for water. Uh, 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 these are uh, in document rather than D1115, which is a document of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina, where they give the names of military victims of combatants, casualties. Z 
they are in Sarajevo. The total is between 10,000 to 74,000. It is about 60,000. Uh, the total number of cases in Bosnia and Herzegovina is 98,000, and of that, Serbs account for about 30,000, and Muslim soldiers for about 60,000. And that is the real figure. And uh, when you uh, and will do your deliberations, we will have a population census result already. <coughs> On this list of the 5,800 combatants killed in Sarajevo proper, there are overlaps. There are cases of same combatants uh, reported twice or sometimes even thrice or four times, and these overlaps or double re figures reported twice. There are 1,002 such cases. Of the 5,800, 1,002 combatants are shown in two places in different times. So these are the victims which were shown as civilian victims whenever it was required. God will not forgive us uh, such lies. And one should believe that God knows all this because the Serbian side tried to reduce the number of victims to the minimum. Document D1115 that we got from the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina was compared with document P5008. This is a document concerning the number of victims in Sarajevo. There are only a few civilians there, only a few. There are 19 civilians in all those overlaps, so that's about 4% if we look at the 1,002 as well. So that is how one manipulates figures, and that is how one manipulates accusations that I can understand in times of war and for propaganda purposes, but one should not appear before a distinguished court of law in that way. Another thing, the most terrible weapon as far as civilians are concerned is a multiple rocket launcher. It would create chaos in streets. It is the most catastrophic weapon. The Serb army never fired multiple rocket launchers at an urban area. You saw these officers and generals, how properly they treated their work and also their fellow citizens of any religious affiliation. Your Excellencies, does this mean that well, actually, although these documents were admitted, this was done on the basis of documents, can I show the piece that has to do with the militarization of Sarajevo or not? I, I don't follow. It's up to you how to present the document during your closing argument, if it is in our evidence. Documents on the basis of which this was done, they were admitted. However, this is visual. This is on a map, Google Earth. It shows where these positions are. And Before that, briefly, I would just like to present paragraph 634 of the prosecution brief to you, as well as 621. There are extremely selective quotations from a document as if Karadzic were supporting this. This is 
the kind of cynicism that I have never displayed in my life, and I abhor that kind of thinking. Please take a look at this document and see what it looks like. Karadzic in that document on page 9 says, Civilians are not the target. They're only military targets. When the prosecution says they were trained, and I've already said that, they were trained in the laws of war, but not how to handle artillery pieces that they perhaps handled when doing their term in the military 15 years before that. In paragraph 635, it says that Karadzic responded with threats, for example, to General Smith in May 1995. It wasn't Karadzic that was issuing the threats. It was Smith. And he asked for the bombing of the Serbs, not the Muslims who had started the initiative, uh, the offensive. I kindly ask the trial chamber to put all these documents in their proper context. If something happened after July in Sarajevo. In mind that this, this document, i.e. visual aid you are using to assist your closing argument is not part of the document. So bear in mind to make a correct reference for the future purpose. For example, in relation to the previous paragraph, the prosecution final brief 634, you seem to have referred to Banbury's handwritten note, page 9. But in the transcript, it appears that you said, in that document on page 9. So in later on, when we read this document, the closing argument, we have no idea what document you were referring to. Uh, I was referring to P2493. Yes, which is Banbury's handwritten note. We saw it before. Please continue. Hvala. Thank you. Very well. Then in P2264, it is not Karadzic that is threatening General Smith. It's the other way around. Serbs, official, serious Serbs, never issued any threats because they were not in a position to threaten anyone. We're not that kind of power to be able to threaten anyone. On the other hand, it was clear to um, Profor and everyone else that NATO is one thing and that they were a different thing until they united. When NATO started s their strikes, upon their instructions, then they became one and the same thing. Allow me to show the degree of militarization of Sarajevo. All of that is based on the documents that have already been ad admitted. The imagery would be a lot richer if we were to include all the documents that were admitted later on because um, when we went through exercises such as this during the course of trial, um, Though they were submitted to the prosecution in advance, so uh, efforts could be made to determine any responses we had vis-a-vis -vis their accuracy, reliability, and so on. It's not the time to, to create new exhibits um, and uh, present them to the court during closing. If they're, if they're grounded on evidence, as the court noted, of course that's fine. Um, but this appears to be something quite new. The chamber agrees with Mr. Tigger. Mr. Karic, please proceed. Thank you. I'm not going to insist. But this is no, not a new exhibit. This is just a presentation of evidence that has already been admitted. Stop time. Just please, please carry on. Thank you. Gospodin Robinson je Mr. Robinson dealt with the question of Srebrenica better than I would have. The prosecution asserts that there was this kind of plan or that kind of plan. In 
in terms of what would happen to Srebrenica. For an entire year, the Serb side tolerated the existence of large areas in Podrinje, the Drina Valley, under the control of the Muslim forces that were mixed with the Muslim population, and they are taking advantage of the population and taking advantage of their homes. When our people would advance, they would run away, and when our people would retreat, then they would go back to these houses and they would fire at us. And then they say that Zhivanovi said that this was not the destruction of property but of military facilities. Ms. Gustafson said that I ordered, that we ordered in the autumn of 1992 that Srebrenica be taken. We were compelled to go for Srebrenica in the spring of 1993. Why did we not do that earlier on? Because we expected a map on the basis of which the Muslims would get a significant part of Podrinje, the Drina Valley. So that is the reason why Srebrenica <coughs> was in 1993, not in 1992. I've already said that I issued this order on the 16th of March, and they are overlooking the fact that it contains a lot of content that no one asked me for and that is favorable for civilians, especially Muslim civilians, because at that moment, all my orders about protecting civilians exclusively pertain to Muslim civilians, because at the moment when Srebrenica fell, there were no Serb civilians in Srebrenica. Just one more thing in relation to Sarajevo and everything else. I would like to draw your attention to the following the attention of the trial chamber to the following, that many incidents, massive ones, bloody incidents, happened when I was attending international conferences, and that's the only reason why I went abroad. That would happen. These incidents were calculated. They wanted the conferences to be disrupted and interrupted. I just wonder about Korichanske Stiene, whether there was this awareness that I was at the conference in London. However, the prosecution does know that the Minister of the Interior, Mitya Stanisic, who is an extremely honest man and very well aware of the law and he was acquitted on account of Korichens Kistiene, whereas the OTP insists that I'm responsible for Korichens Kistiene. They say that I cooperated with Momo Mandic. Momo Mandic before the court of Bosnia and Herzegovina, a court before which it is very hard for a Serb to fare well. He was set free. He was acquitted. Gojko Klitschkovic was acquitted as well. There's the prime minister, there's the ministers, the local leadership. How can the president of the republic be responsible for that then? These are things that a normal person cannot understand. Most of these incidents from the 27th of March, no, 27th of May, when I was in Lisbon, that's when they interrupted our negotiations because of this alleged mortar shell in the street of Asimiskin, which certainly could not have been a Serb shell because it is such a narrow street that it would have to hit one of the walls, I mean. Of the buildings in that street, that is. As far as Srebrenica is concerned, Srebrenica and Zepa had lost the status of safe areas already in May. The agreement was signed on the 8th of May, and according to all international agreements, nobody was supposed to fire from Srebrenica. Nobody. And it's not only that they were shooting, but they were going out whenever they felt like it. They made 
necklaces of Serb ears. And they showed this to foreigners. They would steal cattle, 100 sheep. They killed all the Serb civilians that they would find in the villages around Srebrenica. And here it is being asserted that Srebrenica was starved. KTZ45 said how big his farm was. He's not the only one. They all had that much. Five or 6,000 inhabitants lived in the town of Srebrenica itself, and several thousand refugees from neighboring municipalities, whereas Christine Schmidt testified in this case and stated that on the 25th or 27th of June 1995, as an experienced humanitarian worker, she entered Srebrenica and she observed the children because she said that nothing can be put falsely as far as children are concerned. And then she saw the children playing in the street and they looked healthy and they looked fine. So if children are playing in the street, that means that there is no shooting. And if they are not malnourished, if they're healthy, that means that there is enough food and that there is enough medicine. The prosecution probably regretted the fact that they received that answer. So we tolerated these terrible losses that were inflicted upon us by the 28th Division of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The commanders of this division have blood up to their shoulders. They are direct killers, and some of them were acquitted before this court. And ultimately, we had to separate Zsepa and Srebrenica, and that was the main task. It wasn't Karadzic who ordered on the 9th to attack Srebrenica. Rather, he agreed that Srebrenica be taken because Srebrenica had stopped defending itself. On that day, in the morning, Solic, the president of the municipality, called Sarajevo and asked for permission to withdraw because the army would not defend Srebrenica. Kostic in the evening called the main staff, and he said that the conditions were right for him to enter Srebrenica, and I agreed to that with many provisos, all the things that, he, that they had to take care of and so on and so forth. Also, most importantly, people did not think that the army would enter. We have this intercept from the 10th. The Muslims are saying it seems that the Chetniks do not wish to enter Srebrenica. Now, what happened when they entered Srebrenica? I saw a few killings of some people who happened to be there by members of that well-known platoon. And the members of this platoon took part in the killing of POWs, the population had left earlier on. They left of their own free will. They went to the base in Potocari. We have evidence to the effect that Serb shells were falling around the area, not on them. It was corroborated through testimony here that they had M84, the best tank in the world, the Serbs did. But it it's the best tank in the world, but it did not s hit the hospital, the school, or the civilians. They didn't want the civilian population to disperse in the woods. There was no encounter between the army and the population. And then you have all this evidence about me not believing not knowing whether we had taken it or not. And I'm asking Deronic, is it correct that we have entered Srebrenica? Which is ridiculous that the Supreme Commander should ask some civilian, have we entered Srebrenica? But that's what the situation was like. And then there was this feverish activity in terms of providing security for these civilians. No one had any idea of the remaining people not surrendering. 10 to 15,000 people were scattered through the forest. Actually, they had set out in this column. The Serb side was the last one that agreed to the evacuation of civilians, the last one. Mladic gave that only on the morning of the 12th. There is no way that there was a deportation. It was understandable that those who were not from Srebrenica would leave, but it did not cross our minds that the local population would leave. And then 
in the media. There are reports saying 8,000, I don't know how many thousand of civilians in Srebrenica were shot dead. And of course, I'm calling Derenic and asking him what all of that was about. I did not install Derenic or Berjanin, as was stated here in these arguments presented here orally. I did not install anyone. They were elected there. If the people wanted them there, then they were elected there and appointed there. Then I asked Derenic, what's all this talk about killings? And he says to me, nothing, President, lies as always, just as he said to Vice President Kolevic towards the end of August. They're lying. Nothing happened to Srebrenica. And nothing did happen in Srebrenica. My attention is being drawn to Srebrenica and to civilians. And s whatever was happening happened 80 to 100 kilometers away from Srebrenica. And it wasn't happening to civilians. And of course, when we got the first convincing evidence, these uh, mortal remains on the surface, when Madeleine Albright found this, then there were orders to investigate that, and the military prosecutor said, no one knows anything about this, and no one wants to know about this. There was an immediate response. Why am I saying, uh, I don't want to go into the part uh, why it is not genocide, uh, Mr. Robinson did that better. Why am I saying that Not everybody who was exhumed uh, had been executed. Uh, for instance, P4841 is the list of those exhumed in Zvornik. We received that from out of 4,415, 2,290 were exhumed in Zvornik. If you analyze this out of these, 2000 something, 79 were, uh, had died before 95, but they were all found together in one grave, not in separate ones, uh, like Jan said. Out of the remaining uh, number who did go missing in 95, 1,500 have been established to have been killed in this. Uh, break out by combat. In fact, 1,200 1, were killed during the breakout, and 3,000 uh, were killed at locations that we know as locations of surrender. There are mistakes in the record, but out of 2,299 exhumed in Zvornik, 799 were died before 95, and out of uh, 1,500 who were killed in 1995, 1,200 were killed during the breakout. And 3,000 went missing at places that we know as locations of surrender, or were last seen there. I cannot show you other analyses now because uh, the situation is not right, but other analyses The previous figure is not 3,000, is 300 went missing or were last seen at places that we know as locations of surrender surrender to the army of Republika Srpska. In a document from ICMP, I found thousands of people who are recorded in ICMP documents and the BH Army as having been killed either before July 95 or in other places. Thousands. In a sample of 300, a, a random sample of 300, 16% are false. 16% at least were not killed at that time. And we have evidence for that. If this work uh, were to be done properly, the 
figure should be higher. So that this story and the leading of evidence about the number of those killed is far from good and would certainly affect the qualification. What matters is to establish the truth. The OTP believes that the trial chamber will latch on to any sentence that would enable them to convict. If they believe that, uh, then it's not about finding out the truth. But for the sake of international sanity, we must be about establishing the truth. We must not mutilate documents or put false evidence before the court. Uh, we don't know in which direction this world is heading, but I believe in a very bad direction. All these trials, without us being aware of it, are part of this bad direction in which we are heading. It's a shame that this is not a trial by jury, because the OTP would fare better. Such courts do not judge the accused. They judge the skills of the parties, whereas uh, the accused sits there like a potted flower, just listening. So if this was a trial by jury, uh, Mr. Tiger would e uh, easily win against me. However, I'm interested in the truth, regardless of what my fate will be. And that truth frees me of every responsibility except for the moral one. And I do feel moral responsibility because I'm sorry for everyone who was killed there. And you can find it in my documents when I said, I'm happy that we haven't been waging war uh, for one year now with the Croats. Can you imagine how many of our and their boys are still alive thanks to that? Now, speaking about the merits, the essence, none of my generals or m ministers should even have been indicted, let alone convicted and sentenced to very long terms of imprisonment. It is justice that was condemned. Out of those people, uh, many of them were acquitted before a BH court, which is much harsher than this one. The number of victims uh, is exaggerated in this and many other courts, and the military structure and civilian structures were falsely represented. These things can be used for propaganda, but not before a court of law. In these documents, for instance, we have several that show that. Just for example, uh, they talk about Dusan Jansk here. Dusan Jansk himself says that he excluded a large number of cases because he didn't know uh, how they came to be there, how they came to be included. Very renowned experts of the prosecution say, well, nobody told us there was any fighting before July 95. One expert says, well, I established they had to be killed after the taking of Srebrenica because if they had been killed before, then they would have been found dead in Srebrenica. That is the extent of their ignorance. They believe that everybody who was killed or exhumed was killed after Srebrenica. And over the four years, I will now read to you from a document that relates to 10 municipalities in 
the area of Podrenje were a total of 8,000 plus people were exhumed year by year. I believe it's 229. D2229. You see, in this report, we see the figure that the Muslim side had made an overview of all those exhumed, all those killed throughout the war in 10 municipalities. To pokazuje da je 1313 that shows that 1313 corpses were in individual graves. And it is highly unlikely there were victims of mass executions. About 15 were found in group graves, which is uh, the term when the brave grave contains up to five persons and the rest were found in mass graves which as we saw clearly from other exhibits were used for multiple burials of people who died or were killed in 92, in 93, in 94 and 95 and these things were built into the indictment against me and against Serbs in general. So the number has not been established. And it should not find its way into any judgment as an established number because it hasn't been and there is convincing evidence that people were killed between 92 and 95 and buried more or less in the same places. Erdemovic also testified that he had been informed that in Branjevo there had been burials earlier during the war. So it's perfectly clear this has to be subjected to a new analysis and reconsideration. If I could only show you now... What is marked in a special color those who were not killed or died during... I can read it to you. Document... P4841 is the exhibit uh, showing deaths in other places. And there are other documents, P4843. These exhibits are uh, either in the documents of the Army of Bosnia-Herzegovina. And Jansk himself says that the family reported the man missing in, in 1992. How come he's in this grave? Well, the easy answer is <laughs> multiple burials. Or judgments from the courts of Bosnia-Herzegovina in that area and district courts. D2229. Nine. That's the one I'm trying to open now.
i takvih dokumenta koji... The number of persons found in other locations or have been established to have been killed at a different time is very high and coming close to 50% of the number used by the prosecution and featuring in the indictment. And it's not a small error, even in the sample of 300 chosen randomly by the ICMP, almost 60% are false, and we can prove that. And we could prove uh, much more than that if uh, we had the chance. Ako se pojavi na jednom spisku. If it turns up in one list, 500 mortal remains, DNA identified profiles, but nobody can identify the person because nobody is looking for him. Nobody reported him as missing. Then it's more than clear that that person did not get killed in 1995. God knows when he died and was buried wherever he died. And it's uh, perfectly understandable that nobody will bury him on his own property. They will take him to a known burial place. I'm afraid we are not getting any English translation. Yes, please repeat. Interpreters have not been hearing anything since the last... Uh well, sometimes it's the bucket missing, sometimes there's no water. This whole evidence, uh, if the documents are not mutilated, if they are taking, taken in, into account in their its entirety, and if they are ever analyzed by professionals, I have no doubt about the outcome of this trial. No doubt at all. I will be acquitted, and several other judgments will be revised because some people should never have been convicted because Galic was convicted uh, by a chamber that neglected the evidence of qualified UN officers and relied on an interested party, Berkozecevic. There is no evidence for the allegation of, uh, for the alleged JCE. When the war began, if we are offering everyone to establish their own municipalities wherever possible, it's not possible for a joint criminal enterprise to exist. It's not possible to dislocate these people. The proof of that is that in Republika Srpska, you will find more places that are purely Muslim, such as Bosanski Dubočac, Bosanski Kobash, Yanya. Yanya is not purely Muslim, but it's overwhelmingly Muslim. 
Not a single village like that can be found in Bo the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina in August 95 or after 92. We did not uh, drive our Muslims out and the Cro Croats were involved in our army until the end of the war. We never had a plan of any kind, no, did, did we ever think that any removal would be permanent. The prosecutor uh, adds one sentence to what Mladic says, uh, they will stay there. Because Mladic uh, says, uh, what will happen to a Muslim who goes to Germany? I say, they will remain. It will be regulated by law. I meant he will remain in Republika Srpska because I cannot uh, provide him with residence in Germany. He will be allowed to return. However, they added, the prosecution added the word there. So what is the purpose o o of this? <coughs> this would be the destruction of international justice. I am in favor of international justice. There must be courts that would make sure that a criminal who gets into power does not kill people. But uh, it would be a huge failure of that international justice if wrong decisions were made by a court like that, if the reputation of this court is destroyed in small and big nations and among the presidents of those small nations who will one day maybe come here and be in a position to defend themselves for things that they had to do by law and did not commit any crimes. The, all the documents governing international law are absolutely on our side. Let the prosecution tell us what other outcome was possible? Did we have any other way out? Or was it necessary defense? In criminal law, necessary defense is a valid principle. If your safety is threatened, you have to defend yourselves. In Sarajevo, in three years, they can show 126 of sniping victims and charge me for that. No, they are showing victims of stray bullets, Thomas Mole, and I don't know uh, which other UN officers. All of them say that more people died from stray bullets than from all the sniping. For instance, the 1st Sarajevo Brigade had snipers, but that unit had a front line facing Gorazde, the outer ring, and of course they had snipers. The question is who the snipers were sniping at. They were sniping at other snipers. Enemy snipers. To have snipers in itself is not illegal. What's illegal is to shoot at civilians, and there is no evidence that they deliberately shot civilians. A stray bullet that hits a tram cannot be viewed as targeting a particular person, especially if the person is sitting behind a not really transparent window. To conclude, Your Excellencies, excuse me, my amateur approach. I care more about the truth than about the form. I know that justice and law are not always the same thing, but I care more for justice and the truth, and that's why I chose to represent myself, not because I'm such a fool. However, I realized that nobody can defend themselves properly if they are not defended by <coughs> somebody else. The defense teams do not have resources to carry out their own proper investigations. We showed you a document dated for April, which was not found in the case of General Milosevic. 
and General Fraser admitted it was a document that was an integral part of the orders of the 6th of April. If that document had been produced, Milosevic would not have been convicted of the incident uh, in Hrasnica, the modified air bomb. However, his defense team did not have sufficient resources to dig into archives. My defense team is also restricted in personnel and money, but they have unlimited loyalty and dedication and commitment, and they dug up far more than any other defense team before them. I sincerely hope that my accidental improprieties be forgiven. I have participated in this process uh, without any wish to obstruct it, only wishing to get to the truth. The truth will remain, and whether the judgment and what's on paper will be along the same lines matters less. In the papers, however, there are enough elements for the truth to be known. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kajic. We'll soon adjourn for the week before we resume next Tuesday for rebuttal and rejoin the arguments. There are several admi administrative matters I'd like to deal with now. First, <coughs> the chamber notes for the purposes of the record its instruction that the parties complete all pending issues relate to exhibits by 14th of October 2014 as conveyed via email from the Chamber's legal officer on the 20th of September. Next, the Chamber notes that there are six documents which remain marked for identification in this case. They are MFI D268, D3536, D4264, D4284, D4288, and D4289. The Chamber recalls its order regarding the close of the defense case issued on the 20th of February 2014, in which the Chamber ordered the parties to file submissions on any exhibit-related matter, including on documents that remained marked for identification, by 17th of March 2014. Given that this de deadline has passed, the Chamber instructs the Registry to mark those documents, i.e. MFI D268, D3536, D4264, D4284, D4288, and D4289 as marked as not admitted in this case. Finally, before we adjourn, I would like to raise a couple of matters that I would like the prosecution to address on Tuesday. First, the chamber noticed in respect of Srebrenica and the joint criminal enterprise to eliminate the prosecution final brief refers to the accused responsibility for deportation under count seven as seen for example in paragraph 1101 and footnote 3977. On the other hand in the defense final brief the accused notes relying on paragraph 75 of the indictment that count seven is not charged in relation to Srebrenica, as seen in paragraph 3308, in particular for note 6691. Now, Mr. Tigger, the chamber notes that this very question was posed to you during the pretrial proceedings 
by Lord Bonomi, the then presiding judge of the pretrial chamber, and that the prosecution addressed, in it, addressed it in its submission on Rule 73 bis, filed on 31st of August 2009. In paragraph 16 of that submission, the prosecution explained that deportation was omitted on purpose from paragraph 75 of the indictment and explained that deportation is discussed in paragraph 74 of the indictment only as a means discussed during the formulation of the plan to eliminate the Muslim population from Srebrenica. The prosecution also crossed out count seven in relation to Srebrenica in append Appendix B of that submission. Thus, the, from that moment on, both the accused and the chamber were put on notice that count seven is not charged in relation to Srebrenica. I would therefore like you to clarify for the chamber the brief reference to count seven in relation to Srebrenica. Second, on 10th of September 2014, the chamber received the prosecution submission with respect to in incidents and charges on which no evidence was presented. In this submission, the prosecution states that after the delivery of the trial judgment, the prosecution will declare that it will not proceed further with the incidents and charges against the accused which have been excluded pursuant to Rule 73 bis. The chamber would like to know why the prosecution cannot make this declaration now so that these charges are withdrawn after the closing arguments but before the judgment is delivered. Hearing is adjourned. We'll uh, resume Tuesday next week. All rise.